everybody and welcome welcome to f1 manager 2022 this is intended to be my first new game series of 2023 you should be seeing this if all goes according to plan on the 30th of december 2022 because I can't wait to, to start the series. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to start it in the back end of 22 and we'll have our first proper session in 2023. So what I mean by that is this session is just simply to say, hi, this is what I'm playing next. But also <laughs> to take you through which team I have chosen and a little bit about why. And then after we've done that, I'll take you through some of the uh, management screens just so you've got a little bit of a feel for that side of things. And then in the first proper session, which will be in 2023, and I'm hoping will be a stream, in that first session, because it'll be a stream, I'll do a full race weekend in full with everything. You'll see me doing everything so that you can see the nuances of the game while I'll explain why I might be doing certain things. Uh, design certain parts on the car and take you through that process and all the kind of intricacies do all of that on camera so you can see it in full you can ask your questions you can pick me brains and you can you know you can see why I'm doing certain things and what the plan is and what the kind of uh, goal is for the for the for the development of the car and stuff like that you get all that in full in the first stream session and the full race weekend of the first race of the season and then after that it'll be recorded sessions that's edited down because a race weekend in this game for someone like me who doesn't rush who doesn't like to play a game on any sort of advanced speed option likes to play it in kind of the original speed maybe slightly quicker maybe two speed in this game maybe four speed at a push the race weekends when i've been playing them off camera have lasted about an hour and a half and i can't give you an hour and a half video <laughs> well i could do i suppose but I want to get the videos to about 50, 50 minutes to an hour, so I'll have to edit out some things. Um, but I'd rather you see everything in full first before I start doing that. So that's the reason for streaming the first session. So that's the outlook for this video, for the first stream, and then any subsequent sessions after that. I hope that makes it clear enough. So, first question. Who am I going to be managing? There's quite a few, there's like, there was a handful, there was a, maybe about three or four teams that I thought might make interesting stories. The first one being Mercedes, fall from grace, you know, um, regulations change for 2022 and all this is game is simulating the 2022 season. We know what happened in the 2022 season already because it's finished now and the game has obviously the cars based on the 2022 season's performance levels. So we know, for example, that the Mercedes of the third best car on the grid now. So bringing them back up to the top would be quite interesting. After their period of dominance, let's bring them back up. But it's, that would be quite a short term and not too difficult. They've got a lot of money and they're not too far away from the top. So it wouldn't take a lot to get them back there. So that wouldn't be that fun. I hate Red Bull with a passion. Ferrari, again, one of the top two teams here. Wouldn't be much fun. So that rules them out. So that's those three out. Uh, Alpha Tauri. Red Bull, sister, uh, Red Bull sister team, hate Red Bull, so they're out as well. Alpine, I find Alpine a bit bland, a bit like, yeah, not the biggest Alonso fan, really, so, yeah. You know, so that leaves about five teams. Anyway, so to cut to the chase, the one team that stood out like a sore thumb as the team that I need to be playing as in this playthrough was, or is, McLaren. McLaren are a cornerstone of F1, having been part of the sport since 1966 and winning numerous drivers and constructors championships over the years. Last season, they came a respectable fourth overall, with Daniel Ricciardo and Lando Norris securing the only 1-2 finish of the season. The talented driver pairing of Ricciardo and Norris returns for McLaren this season, and one thing is certain, they're not going to settle until they're reigning champions once more. Now, I could tell you that the reason why I've picked McLaren is because I've watched Formula One since the late 80s, right? And I was a Mika Hakkinen fan. 
in the late 90s. Uh, and obviously he won two championships and battled Schumacher in 2000 and just missed out, which was an epic season. It was a 2000 season. Um, and then he retired. Sabbatical, it was bad at us at the time, but he never came back in 2001 after a dreadful season. Um, and then I was a, a Lewis Hamilton fan from 2007. Saw this new up and coming mixed race kid on the block. Ron Dennis uh, brought him in and uh, he drove for McLaren and I'd had an affinity with McLaren from the Mika Hakkinen days, kind of loosely followed him with Kimi Raikkonen too. So uh, yeah, I've had a bit of history following them because of the drivers that I was supporting at the time as I've progressed through my Formula One uh, viewership. So that could be the reason why I picked them, but mm, not really. It could also be that Lando Norris is the next person that I will be supporting with my whole 100% effort when Lewis Hamilton retires, because I quite like him. I think he's a jovial fella, he's, 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 a, he's a funny guy, he does some streaming and stuff, and he's, I just like him. He's the kind of guy that you can get behind uh, as a driver. And he's also British, which obviously I'm British too. So again, that could be the reason, but no. It could be the fact that, hey, they've fallen down the field, they haven't won a title since 2008 with Hamilton, you know, there's been a bit of a dry spell for them now, and, you know, they've been at the back of the field a few times when they first got the Honda engines, and they came a bit forward, finished fourth last season, and they've gone back a bit in 2022 in the real life season, so, you know, taking them back to the glory days of when... Ron Dennis had them at the pinnacle of their peak, you know, reliving the, 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 the 1998 season when the MP44 won 15 out of 16 races. That could be the reason why I'm taking control of them, to bring them back to that glory. No, that's not the reason. The sole reason why I am picking McLaren for this playthrough, and you're going to laugh, is because one Mr. Brian Potter... <laughs> is taking control of them as their new manager. And if you watched my previous uh, F1-based uh, manager series, it was Motorsport Manager. And in that, you could create your own team, which you can't do in this, unfortunately. But uh, that team was Phoenix Knights Racing, based on the Phoenix Knights comedy uh, show. He ran the Phoenix Knights Club, of course. And the car was orange. So we've got an orange car right here. And Brian Potter is making his fabled return. And therefore, that is why I'm picking McLaren for this playthrough. Although the other aspects that I did mention obviously had a bit of an impact too. But there you go. Brian Potter is making his return to take McLaren back to the glory days. Fun times. Did I turn off the... That's right, I turned off the tutorial. We don't need any tutorials here, people. I played the game for about 20 hours now, and I'm absolutely loving it, by the way, so hence why I'm so eager to start this series, because as much fun as I'm having playing the game off camera, as you will, may, may, as you will probably know if you've watched me for long enough, I don't tend to get a lot of fun out of playing games off camera. I much prefer to play them on camera. So I want to get this show on the road as quickly as possible. So here we are. Right, so the second half of this video is just going to be a, a run through some of these screens. So if you know this game inside out, then perhaps this might not be the section for you, but you can cut off now, I suppose, if you want. But if you've not seen this game before, and you're interested in seeing some of the nuances, I'm going to just take you through uh, the basic screens, really, so that, you, so that when we start the first session, um, the stream, uh, you've got a little bit of an indication as to what screens I'm clicking on. But yes, here we are. Brian Potter's first day in the office. He wheels himself in with his uh, assistant PA, Jerry, the Saint St. Clair, you know. And, uh, and uh, yeah, he's got to get this team back into shape. So where the hell do we start? Well, we'll start in the, in the next session. But uh, yeah, we've got an inbox. Because who doesn't love a good inbox of emails? You come home from work after dealing with 100 or 200 if you've been on leave. And hey, let's just deal with some virtual ones too. <laughs> but yeah, self-explanatory. We've got a calendar, which again is pretty self-explanatory. It just highlights what events are coming up, race weekends, you know, sponsorship uh, commitments, when your parts are ready and when your parts are going to be designed, etc, etc. It's just, just a calendar. Circuit screen gives you a list of every single circuit on the calendar, 
22 of them this season. Just gone, or this season coming up in the game. Which to me, I think, is too many. I think uh, 20 is a good number. 22, 23 potentially next season, did I hear? Potentially? Gone other days when it used to be 16. Um, but yeah, 22 races here and it gives you a lot of information about the races which can help you set your strategy such as what attributes of your car are, are going to be most useful for this track could help you with your designing process um, how many times safety cars or virtual safety cars have been deployed over the past four years which gives you uh, gives you an indication as to how likely it is a safety car might come out, which could impact upon your strategy making decisions. Um, expected strategies uh, go hand in hand with that, tyre compound performance and then previous race results. So a screen that you can use to help set your race strategy more often than not. So that's, And you can do that across every single track. And then you've got your race preparation screen, which we'll have a look at in more detail when we go into a race but basically you can set performance targets this is sponsorship based performance targets i believe incentives um that your sponsors will pay towards if you reach them um, you get some mandatory ones such as reaching q2 such as setting a fastest lap such as finishing in the top 14 with at least one of your car three times in a row gets you half a million you can set also your own so these are called guarantees, and if you say, right, I'm going to guarantee that we're going to get, with at least one driver, and you can edit these, uh, I'm going to get a top 10 finish, at least a 10th with at least one driver, you can obviously get higher rewards, the, the tighter or the, the more difficult you make the, 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 the guarantee, but then of course there's a potential risk of not meeting that target of a loss of money. So it's a bit of a balancing act, but you can implement other um, targets to help boost your potential reward from that race so it's a way to gain extra cash basically and then you can look at the cars that you've got built and what parts you want to put on them etc etc from the race weekend screen but yeah look at that in more detail properly when we uh, when we start our first race i suppose so then we have the car screen the biggest or, yeah, probably the biggest, um, you know, uh, focus for us is improving this car. Not just for this season, because I think this season's probably a lost cause, to be honest with you. But subsequent seasons um, is definitely where it's most important. And the way we can do that is by developing parts. Now, we can develop parts for the current year's car which is in the design section. So you want to design a new new wing? This is where you do it. You want to design a new underfloor? This is where you do it. And that will be designing for this year's car. Once you've designed it and the design is finished, you then have to build it, which is your manufacturing, where you manufacture known designs. So that's quite straightforward. Um, so yeah, you design your cars for this year's, uh, parts for this year's car, and then any non-regulated um areas of your car so regulation changes happen and can decrease your knowledge about certain car parts any car parts that aren't under regulation changes you carry those over to the next year um but any that have been hit with a regulation change you lose um your knowledge about that part so one way to offset that and to prepare for next season's car is to go to the research section and anything that you design in here is for next year's car. So research next year's, design this year's. Again, more detail about all of this when we get into that first stream, where we will look at our design focus and how we're going to approach designing our car for this season and for next. Because there's a few little quirks about it, a few little nuances. Um, so we'll get into that in the next session. But basically, in a nutshell, this screen is where you design your parts for this year's car and uh, research for next year's car which is crucial to us moving up through the field and then your warehouse is your existing stock of all your various car parts and your engines and stuff 
So that's the car screen. Very straight, straight, very, it's very straightforward, very intuitive. It's uh, not too many screens to worry about. Like Football Manager, you could be poring over lots of statistics, lots of screens. This is much more stripped down and, and much more straightforward. And I'm sure the game will get more in depth and more things added in future renditions. This is the very first one. There's going to be more and they're going to improve upon them. But as a baseline effort, this is a very good start for them. Uh, it's a really enjoyable experience. So that's the car screen. The driver screen is where we see our drivers, quite straightforward. Ricardo and Lando Norris, pretty decent drivers. You know, they're middle of the road when it comes to the overall driver stats, but I'm quite happy with them as a pairing. I don't anticipate um, getting rid of either of these guys uh, for this season. However, our first replacement of the season will be uh, our reserve driver who is 29 has very low growth potential not going to get much better um, and he's only got a rating of 72 not good enough so our goal is to get a young driver with some decent potential to improve to potentially replace Ricardo maybe and I've obviously played the game uh, a little bit and therefore have a little bit of insider knowledge if you will but um, Paul Cher is only 18 with 71 uh, rating potential, or uh, rating current rating, um, and Jack Doohan is 19 with 72. So one of these two, more than likely Jack, will be replacing good old uh, Van Dorn. We'll do that in the stream. So that's the drivers. This is a staff screen. We have uh, different staff. We have the technical chief who lends his expertise to the mechanical design of all car parts and our aerodynamicist who adds to the design of the aerodynamic parts. So these guys provide a bonus to any car part that you design, which is quite important. So, you know, it's important that we've got the best people for the job and Again, to save you me going through all the screens, but the one person that I'm going to replace is the technical chief, because there is one that's a free agent out there that is better than him. And that's uh, Mr. T. Chuang, who is a free agent and has got a 78 overall rating. So I would be quite happy to have Mr. Chong come in because we need to catch up. Our car is the eighth best on the grid, so any little slight edge that we can have when it comes to designing our car parts, we need that. So a better technical chief is a necessity, and there's one out there waiting in the wings, so we'll replace him. The aerodynamicist, there isn't one better without poaching from another team, which starts to become expensive, so we'll stick with him for now. And the race engineers are the guys you hear on the TV talking to the drivers, um, and both of these guys, they're kind of middle of the diddle, to quote Sid Waddell. They're kind of middle of the road. Again, I'm kind of happy to keep them for now, not that fussed, but this guy, we've got somebody to replace him with so that's that we can scout as i just as you've just seen we can actually scout um these people uh if we want to send out some scouts to to see their stats detailed scouting we can see their contract if they're in another contract with another team or what they might want as out of a contract it might give us some indication as to how much salary they want and things to make negotiating easier um so we can scout if necessary as you can see we haven't got any of his stats available because we haven't scouted yet so do we scout mr chong or do we just nab him we're just going to nab him and hopefully we'll give him a contract that he's happy with quite uh, sharpish so that's mr chong coming in so that's the scouting system you can scout drivers too uh this takes us on to the next screen which is the facilities screen so the facility screen Gives you a variety of different facilities, all of which provide different bonuses. So you've got the car development facilities. Factory is where you manufacture your car parts. Not as important, I don't think, as the design centre, which is where you design them. Again, we need to improve our car. Design really needs to be the focus. Now, by improving the design centre, you get... Um, you can only do so many design projects at any one time, which is limited by your design centre. We can currently design two things at a time, whereas if we upgrade this, we can increase that to three projects at a time. Quite important. The more projects you can do at a time, the quicker your development curve. 
So this is very important. And then at the next level, we'll get more engineers and, and so on. So quite an important upgrade and one which we're going to get probably at the start of the, uh, start of the stream, to be honest with you, because this needs to happen ASAP. The wind tunnel on the CFD simulator, again, when you see the design uh, section of the game, when we look at it properly, you can add wind tunnel time and CFD time to designing your car parts to improve their effectiveness. And this improves the effectiveness of adding that time. The more effective your wind tunnel, the more bonus to the parts that that hour of wind tunnel time will give. Um, after design, these two are probably the next important. And then these two are quite specific. They give, this gives a bonus to your brake cooling in your suspension, and that's it. And this gives you engine cooling in the side pods of the chassis and brake cooling in the front wing. Bonuses to those, which is quite specific. So not quite so bothered about them, but they're level two already, so they're pretty good. So yeah, design center, priority, then these two, second priority, then factory, third, if we've got some spare cash lying around. That one and that one we'll leave till the end. So that's gonna be our sort of path with the uh, car development facilities. In the staff facilities, the two important ones here, you've got a team hub, which gives you experience gain on your staff. Now your staff, those key staff members and your drivers can all gain experience and then you can after they get to a certain experience level they get a development point which you then can put into their stats and that happens regularly so if you want to develop your drivers and your staff to be the best that they can be then you want them to gain as much experience as possible and as quickly as possible and the way to help with that is through improving your team hub, which increases the experience game of staff, and your race simulator, which boosts the experience gain of your drivers. So these two are also a quite a strong focus because we're gonna have Lando Norris, who's 22 at the moment, young driver, could get better. We're gonna have uh, Doohan, probably. Jack Doohan's gonna be the one that I go for more than likely, so he's young. And we wanna develop them as quickly and as effectively as possible. So. Race Simulator certainly uh, a priority to help with that development. And then finally, Operations Facilities give you a little bit of extra team attractiveness and sponsor payouts and, you know, nice things to have, not a priority. Out of this area, Weather Centre serves a bit more of a purpose for accurately uh, predicting weather in a race weekend. So... That's going to be our focus in this particular section of the facilities. We will build a boardroom because we don't have one. And I'm sure our board of directors are probably slightly unhappy about that. As much as I hate uh, red tape and politics and bureaucracy, we better give them somewhere to sit down <laughs> and a desk. You know what I mean? So uh, that's that. So that's the facilities management. And as well as building facilities you have to upkeep ability uh, upkeep your facility so if you look at the factory for example you can see that it's got a condition rating and over time that condition rating will go down which will then effectively lower the effectiveness of this building so we have to then put some money into it to refurbish it we have to, re to, to refurbish it is the word to use there and then you've got a, a monthly upkeep per building so the more high tech the building the more expensive it is to upkeep a monthly upkeep as well so a bit of a balancing act with the finances as well as just building them outright but uh, ultimately as i said the the, the path of the facilities is uh, design center then the wind tunnel and stuff the the driver increase hub the race simulator and maybe the weather forecast center but that's about it until we get a, a, a surplus of cash. We've then got the board, who haven't got a desk at the minute, but hey. <laughs> board confidence is self-explanatory, but uh, you know, basically we do well in the races, we meet our objectives, and we don't go bankrupt, we're gonna be doing all right. They want to become Constructors' Champion by 2026, and want us to finish at least sixth this season, with the eighth best car. High expectations much? Slightly. <laughs> 
But anyway, so that's the confidence. We've also got a budget. We get uh, a season budget given to us by the board. And then the rest of our money comes from sponsorship. So sponsorship plus budget equals, in, equals you know, finance. Um, so we get 57 million from the, from, the, from, the, from the board. And talking of sponsors... Uh, I thought the sponsorships were on the in the finances section. So that's fine. Uh, team rating, you can see a little bit about the team rating. The team rating of McLaren is pretty decent, actually. Um, we, we're revered, which is the second tier on the ladder. And that's because uh, they've done fairly well over the past four years. So we get some decent points out of, out of the constructors' results for the past four years. The drivers' results over the past four years, not quite so good. Uh, but still in some points but then we get a, a nice little bonus to our heritage because depending on how many championships your team's been in in this case 57 for McLaren and how many championships they've won again in this case 12 you get heritage points based on that so we get a whole hundred heritage points which is actually fairly high considering the, the scale here uh, just for being just for being McLaren I wonder how much Ferrari get probably a hell of a lot not to mention their Ferrari payment. Uh, anyway, so that's a little bit about... Oh, and there's our profile too. So there is your uh, board confidence screen. We won't be checking this too often. We'll check in every so often to see what the board are thinking. But other than that, this kind of stuff runs in the background, really. And then you get the finance screen, which gives you a season balance projection. It won't look like that because we're going to be spending cash. Uh, our monthly balance, which we might drill down into to make sure we don't go bankrupt in the save. But uh, the one thing to note in Formula 1, if you're not uh, a regular viewer, is there is a cost cap of $141 million, which was introduced to try to stop the big teams from spending whatever the hell they pleased on improving their performance, whereas the smaller teams that couldn't afford to do that were getting left behind because they couldn't match the big team spending power. So they bought a cost capping to try to help to concertina uh, the, the field a little bit. Um, and then Red Bull went and breached it last season. Got a slap on the wrist, effectively, uh, for it. But anyway, um, yeah. So we can't spend more than 141 million in a season. Some expenses are exempt, such as I think your driver salaries are exempt from that cost cap, and I think your head, uh, your head personnel are also exempt from that. Correct me if I'm wrong, experts out there. But there are some exemptions to that cost cap, and I'm sure definitely driver salaries are included in that in that um, exemption. Um, but yeah, mostly anything to do with developing your facilities, developing your car, and 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 cost of the staff, such as pit crew and engineering staff, not the head staff, but the 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 the, the, the meat and bones of the operation. All of those come into play of the cost cap, I believe. And then we get a sponsorship screen, which breaks down your sponsorship obligations and breaks down how much sponsorship you're going to get this season. So 103 million in sponsorship uh, money this season to go with the 50 million from the board means that we get 150 million this season, I believe, what this is telling us between the two. The cost cap is 141. So we could technically speaking almost breach the cost cap with McLaren uh, if we went all out and spent like a lunatic potentially. And then you got your little standings screen, which clearly is the tables of the constructors and the drivers' championships. So there you go. That is a whistle stop tour of the the screens in the manager's dashboard, if you will. Team principal dashboard. Potter's dash. Sounds like a sounds like a, the name of a racehorse. Potter's dash. Hmm. If I just had enough money to have a racehorse, that's what I'd call it, right? Uh, anyway, so that gives you a whistle-stop tour. So, yeah, in, in, in essence, the the, the 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 game runs on the principle of, look, have the best... It shouldn't be difficult. Have the best drivers in the best car, which you get by hiring and firing the drivers and designing the best car and researching the, best, researching the parts for the car and designing the parts for the car to get the best car have the best facilities because they give the best bonuses to the car and the drivers and the staff. And if you do all of that, in addition to having the best staff as well, of course, then that's the aim of the game, really. 
Sounds simple, but will it be? To find that out, join me in the next session where we will drill down into designing our first couple of car parts in more detail as our first task, hire ourselves a new reserve driver and a new technical chief as our second task, and then get into the first full race weekend at Bahrain where we will uh, hopefully see how our car performs. On paper, it's looking bad, but will that be reflected in reality? Join me next time to find out. I hope you're looking forward to this. I'm immensely looking forward to getting back into some F1 management simulation with licensed cars and everything this time. So it should be good fun. Will Potter do it again? Join me on the journey and find out how we kick that journey off in the next session in 2023. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Twixmas period. Have a happy new year, New Year's Eve slash New Year's Day, whatever you're doing. And until next time, I'll see you soon.